controversial announcement coming out by the FDA the, the morning after pill, now available to teens as young as 17 without a prescription. Our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, joins us now from our L.A. Bureau to tell us more about it. Hey, Sanjay. Good morning, Karen. Uh, you know, since August of 2006, uh, Plan B or the morning after pill has been available to uh, women 18 and older without a prescription. So that what we're talking about here is lowering the age at which uh, women could get this without a prescription to 17. Uh, it's interesting. You know, there was there was a federal court uh, that that uh, sent a letter to the FDA saying they should do this within a month. That that letter was sent back March 23rd. So we're at the one month mark now, which is why this is making news today. The FDA said it's not going to appeal that decision. It's going to send a letter to Plan B saying, okay, you can start marketing this now, Plan B to women 17 and older without a prescription. What was interesting as we started digging into the story a bit, Kieran, is that uh, uh, the same federal court judge said, uh, should this be something that is available to women of any age without a prescription? We're not say he's not saying that that should happen now, but is asking the FDA to look into that as well. So uh, we may see even a further broadening of, of the availability of this particular medication without a prescription, Karen. And uh, medically speaking, uh, because there is some controversy over this pill, um, is are you terminating a pregnancy when you take Plan B? Well, you know, this, this is how it works. Uh, you take Plan B, and you can think of this as a, as a pill that has a, a very high dose of progesterone. It's sort of like taking several birth control pills. Several things uh, could potentially happen when you re release this amount of progesterone. If a woman has not ovulated yet, it may prevent ovulation, number one. Number two, if a woman has ovulated, it may prevent the sperm from actually entering the egg, uh, preventing fertilization. Uh, if the sperm has already fertilized the egg, it may prevent that egg from implanting itself on the uterine lining. So you can define it how you want, but that's basically uh, how this particular medication works. The other question is, uh, I remember when we, uh, when, when this was available, it was very controversial back when I went to college as well. And one thing that the practitioners would say is that they want women to take a pregnancy test first. So if it's not, if you don't need a doctor's prescription, how do you take a preg? I mean, do you, does the pharmacist then recommend that you take a pregnancy test first? Well, I'm not sure there's, there's a sort of across-the-board regulation on that uh, as to whether or not a, women, uh, a woman has to take a pregnancy test first. So uh, I think what, you're sort of getting at some of the controversial aspects of this because there are people who'd say you should beforehand. Other people say if there was a concern about unprotected sex, say you could take this pill within 72 hours after that and another pill, incidentally, 12 hours after that. So, um, you know, it, it's, uh, you're probably going to hear different things from different doctors regarding that. All right. Sanjay Gupta for us this morning on this. Thanks so much.